Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to lesson number five. Now the flow of charge through a conductor not only depends on the voltage, but also the resistance in a circuit. Let's compare resistance in a conductor to a pedestrian crossing a street. If there were only a few people crossing the street, it would be easier for the pedestrian to get from one side of the street to another. But if there were many people trying to cross the street, our pedestrian would need to work much harder to cut through the crowd. Resistance is anything that causes opposition to the flow of electrical charge around a circuit. The higher the resistance of a conductor, the harder it is for the electrical charges to push through. Now everything in an electric circuit has resistance, even these conducting wires. Today we will do an experiment to see how potential difference and current that passes through a resistor are related to each other. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define resistance, measure resistance, and use the formula R is equal to V over I in calculations. Here we have a simple circuit containing one resistor, a direct current power supply, an ammeter, and a voltmeter. We will steadily increase the current through the resistor and measure the potential difference across the resistor as the current changes. We must ensure to keep a fair test, therefore all factors that may affect current, namely type of material and temperature, must be kept constant. When carrying out this experiment, we will make sure that the resistor does not heat up. We will allow current to pass through the resistor only for a very short while, so that the resistor remains at room temperature. What I've done is taken a series of readings for current and potential difference by increasing the current through the resistor by 10 milliamperes at a time. I've then taken those readings and recorded them on a table. But before I show you this table, let me illustrate to you how I actually obtained those readings. I'm now going to turn the dial of my DC power supply up so that the current passing through the resistor is measuring 10 milliamps Here is my voltmeter reading. I've set my voltmeter on the 10 volt scale and we can see now that the needle is lying at the 1,5 volt mark. I'm sure you all saw how we took those readings. Now I'm going to go to my table and show you the readings that I actually collected. My first reading of 10 milliamps, I recorded 1,5 volts. My next reading of 20 milliamps, I obtained a reading of 3,0 volts. 30 milliamps gave me 4,3 volts, 40 milliamps gave me 6,2 volts, and my last reading of 50 milliamps gave me a reading of 7,6 volts. Let's now use these results to plot a graph to establish the relationship between potential difference and current. Have a look over here. Here is my graph to show the relationship between potential difference and current. Do you notice that I've plotted the potential difference values on the y-axis and the current values on the x-axis? On each of these axes, I've set up a very clear scale. And I've then plotted the points on the graph according to the scale. Do you see that the graph that is now plotted is a nice straight line? This shows us that as the current increases, so the potential difference is also increasing. Therefore, we can now say that potential difference is directly proportional to the current that flows through the resistor. There is another way we can confirm these findings. What we can do is to calculate the ratio of the potential difference to the current using the results we obtained in the experiment. But before we can do that, we must make sure that we convert our current readings which were measured in milliamperes, to our SI unit for current, which is amperes. Let's have another look at the table. Here I've introduced the third column, which will allow us to work out the current measured in our SI unit in amperes. Now remember how we convert milliamperes to amperes. To convert the milliampere to the ampere, 
we must divide the value by 1000. So let's go and do that on our table. Here we have 10 milliamperes. If we divide 10 by 1000, we will get a value of 0, 0.010 amperes. Let's repeat that for all the rest. 20 milliamperes gives me 0, 0.020 amperes. The next one, 0, 0.030 amperes. 0, 0.040 amperes. And finally, 50 milliamperes gives me 0, 0.050 amperes. Now that we've got all our values in the correct SI units, let's now do the calculation to work out the ratio between potential difference and current. In other words, V divided by I. Let's have a look at this calculation. If we take the ratio V divided by I, and we take our first reading, where potential difference was 1,5 volts, and we divide it by our current reading of 0, 0,10 amperes, we will now get a reading of 150 volts per ampere. I have now recorded that value of 150 volts per ampere into the final column of our table. I've also done the other calculations for the other readings. Let's now have a look at our final column. If we look closely at the ratio of potential difference and current for all of our values, we can see that the values are all fairly close to each other. It looks like this value is almost constant. So what we do now is to calculate an average value of the ratio of V over I. If we take the values of all our ratios of V over I and we add them up and divide it by 5, we will get an average value of 150 volts per ampere. Let's now refer back to our graph of potential difference against current. Can you see now we've got our straight line graph and we have a constant gradient where the gradient is equal to our ratio of V divided by I. Thus both the calculation using the table of results and the graph are showing us that potential difference is directly proportional to the current passing through the resistor. Now let's see how we can write down this relationship mathematically. Watch as I write this on this piece of paper. Well, we know that V is proportional to I. We established that in the previous graph. Now, we can also write down the ratio of V divided by I is equal to a constant, which I'm going to label as K. But we are now going to define that constant as the value R, which is the resistance of the conductor. So therefore, substituting R for K, we can write down R is equal to V divided by I. And this is how we come to the definition of resistance. I'm now going to define resistance. This is an important concept, so please make sure that you do learn it. The resistance of a component is the potential difference applied across it divided by the current passing through it. The relationship between potential difference, current, and now resistance is very helpful in assisting us in designing a circuit or an appliance. George Ohm was the first scientist to investigate this relationship. He formulated the relationship between potential difference, current, and resistance by the following law, known as Ohm's law. Mathematically, he expressed it as V equals I times R where V equals the voltage, measured in volts, I is the current, measured in amperes, and R is the resistance, measured in ohms. This relationship is only true if the temperature of the conductor remains constant. So resistance is measured in ohms, named after George Ohm. But the question is, what is an ohm? The resistance of a component is one ohm, when a current of 1 ampere passes through the component, 
if a potential difference of one volt is applied across it. Let's now tackle a few problems using the Ohm's law equation. The question is, what is the resistance of a resistor if a current of 2,5 amperes passes through it when a potential difference of 4,5 volts is applied across it? Well, first of all, we write down the information that we're given. Potential difference V is 4,5 volts. The current I is equal to 2,5 amperes. Now we know that V is equal to I times R. Therefore, rearranging to calculate R, the resistance, R must equal V over I, which you will recognize from earlier in the lesson. Substitute our values in. V is equal to 4,5 volts. I is equal to 2,5 amperes. And our answer of 4,5 divided by 2,5 gives us a value of 1,8 ohms. Well, I'm sure you found that quite easy. Now let's see if we can calculate current by using the same equation. What current will pass through a resistor of resistance 240 ohms when a potential difference of 12 volts is applied across it? Let's write down our information. The resistance R is given as 240 ohms. The potential difference V is given as 12 volts. Let's write down our Ohm's law equation. V is equal to I times R. Therefore, I must equal V divided by R if we rearrange the equation. Substitute in our values. V is 12 volts. R is 240 ohms. 12 divided by 240 gives us a current reading of 0 0,05 amperes. And for our last calculation, let us now work out the potential difference using the Ohm's law formula. A current of 45 milliamperes passes through a resistor of resistance 158 ohms. What is the potential difference across this resistor? Well, again, we write down our information. Current is 45 milliamperes. Now we know that we have to convert to SI units. So to convert milliamperes to amperes, we divide by 1,000. 45 divided by 1,000 gives us a value of 0, 0,045 amperes. The resistance is given as 158 ohms. Therefore, using our Ohm's law equation, V is equal to I times R, substitute in our values, I is 0, 0,045 amperes. Resistance is 158 ohms. 0, 0,045 multiplied by 158 gives us a potential difference reading of 7,11 volts. Well, I hope you found these calculations simple. In our next lesson, we will be doing more of these calculations. Until then, goodbye for now.